Hi and welcome to another Jauntily Macabre Ramble here on Morbid History. Today we're delving into an iceberg video again and it's part one of many. I'll link the original one below. It spans from ancient times all the way to very modern, so I had to cherry pick a little, but it'll be a lot to go through either way. So, yay! <laughs> Without further ado, let's jump straight into part one. Every job must be carefully analyzed. The first entry on this list is something that comes from the place of hard words to pronounce, which is kind of my nemesis if you've seen my earlier iceberg videos. When you think about ancient times, you don't usually think about tiny computers, but that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Antikythera mechanism. I butchered that. I know. Either way, it was found outside the coast of Greece in 1902 on a shipwreck and it blew the minds of the scientific smarty pants of the day because the little machine was built with cogwheels and wood and it just didn't fit into what people believe was common knowledge at the time. They think it was made around 2 BC. Mm. So tiny computers, ancient Greece, usually don't really mix, but in, in this case they did. Reconstructions have shown that it's a tiny calculator of sorts. Its uh, focus, like main objective, was to uh, calculate eclipses and positions of the sun and moon and other known celestial planets and things. Which it did very well. It still does confound and confuse us all though. And it's still a mystery as to how it could have been made and how that knowledge just kind of up and disappeared for hundreds of years. Then we venture into the oddity era. <laughs> the oddity era of this video. No, but a true oddity. And we travel to ye old England in the 1700s. There, in 1726, a woman called Mary Toft made a splash by giving birth to dearly departed carcasses of rabbits, sometimes whole and sometimes just parts of them. Ew. Great doctors of the time took this as proof of a theory that was going around then. Uh, medical theories weren't good or great at all just a few hundred years ago. The theory was that if a pregnant woman was startled or felt any kind of strong emotions during pregnancy, it would leave an impression on the fetus and it could come out deformed. Mary herself leaned heavily into this and uh, yeah, she said that she had been startled by a rabbit while out and about during her pregnancy. Many wise and intellectual men back in those days were very into it. Even the royal physician uh, doctor came there, they all did, from near and far, to witness her pushing out these rabbit parts. Entertainment. They must have been lacking it a lot. 
many were fooled by this whole hoax until one skeptical doctor threatened to examine her by doing some painful procedures like examining her uterus and stuff like that without any kind of pain relief anesthesia because of course you didn't have that back then so yeah at that point she confessed she let it all out she had been stuffing those dearly departed demised rabbit parts into her hoo-ha and she had people accomplices helping her with this and the whole charade fell it was all for some some fame and money hustlers gotta hustle don't hate the player hate the game can't blame a girl for trying and stuffing deceased animals into her bodily openings moving on And from that very weird story, we delve into something that most people already know about. The mysterious, I guess, city of Atlantis. Atlantis has actually just one real proper mention anywhere. And it was the philosopher Platon, Pla Platon in Swedish, Plato. Hmm, yeah, he wrote about it in 360 BC and being a philosopher, most people, even his student Aristotle, assume that it was like a moral philosopher, philosopher, philosophical story and pure fiction. You know, meant to spark some debate. The story of Atlantis was that of a very advanced civilization that angered the gods so greatly that they one day plunged it down into the ocean and destroying it. The gods did. That is. And it's a, a neat story as far as stories go but uh, of course it hasn't stopped um, conspiracy theories and uh, well other theories there's an abundance of them and uh, we would need an entire episode if we're gonna go through all the different places that have been pointed out as places of this lost city I think you could just point at any ocean on the map and there will be at least one person who thinks that Atlantis is uh, down there. We've all heard about it, there's not much else to say. So let's get on to the next one. And then we move on to the Nazca Lines. Sparking the imagination of tinfoil hats everywhere to this day. Is it aliens? Either way, these are geoglyphs that were made by the Nazca people in Peru. Why? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> that That's the mystery of it, we don't know. They span all up to 12 kilometers. I'll put here what that is for non-European speakers. Either way, they're very very big and many people have suggested that you couldn't have made these giant art pieces on the ground without actually being up in the sky. Others have su suggested and proven that you can actually see them from nearby hills and mountains, which could have helped in making them. 
The geoglyphs depict a wide range of things from animals, hummingbirds, humans, and just abstract geomo geometric shapes, long lines, and yeah, whatever the person making them fancied. And yeah, the giant mystery of it all is still to this day. Why? Why did they make them? Was it like an offering to the gods upstairs to see them? Was it landing spots for ancient aliens? Or even landing spots for ancient flying devices? Which we will touch upon in the next entry. So let's get to that. And now we're delving into out-of-place artifacts, which means historical objects that have been found but do not correspond to our known timeline. They shouldn't be there. The technology wasn't advanced enough for this particular thing. Just Artifacts out of place, as the name suggests. One of these well-known out of place artifacts is the Baghdad Battery. It consists of a ceramic vase with a copper tube and an iron rod. It was made in the sometime during the first hundred years AD in what is present-day Iraq. Many have speculated since it was found that it was some kind of primitive battery. I will not sit here and lie and pretend that I know how batteries work or how this would work as a battery, but there was some acidic components found inside of the vase and People who know these things decided that it could have worked uh, bringing out some electricity for some reason. And uh, of course electricity would not be invented for very long during the time of this Baghdad battery. Other scholars have uh, suggested that just as with other similar finds, this was just a vessel to keep sacred scrolls, which is just thoroughly unexciting. The debate is still up on this one. Another one of these mysteries is cocaine mummies. Cocaine was not supposed to be found anywhere during ancient Egyptian times, except in the Americas. How did traces of cocaine end up on the mummies? Did the Egyptians somehow travel to the Americas? Did people from the Americas travel to Egypt? A bit strange, isn't it? It was not supposed to be there. Very out of place indeed. While we're still in ancient Egypt, why not talk about another out of place artifact? Helicopter hieroglyphs. That's a thing too. Of course, these hieroglyphs could just be misinterpreted and uh, there's just supposed to be something else entirely, but they look enough as helicopters or flying objects to be the center of conspiracy theories. We all know that the ancient aliens and the conspiracy theorists and stuff like that just, they really enjoy thinking about ancient flying machines. And there in ancient Egypt, they found it. The carvings, hieroglyphs, 
date to the reign of Seti uh, Seti Seti one, circa twelve hundred BC, and were found in his temple. Let me know down in the comments what you think they look like. Are these ancient helicopters or birds? Please, please do let me know. And before we leave this entry, don't think we're gonna miss out on even more ancient airplanes, but we're going to the Americas this time. Mm. I'll butcher the name again, I'm so sorry. The Kumbaya airplanes. Kumbaya? Kumbaya. Kumbaya airplanes. Sorry. These artifacts are actually just highly stylized sculptures of uh, animals and birds that could be interpreted as aircrafts and airplanes. Mm, I'll, I'll once again let you Dear viewers, comment down below what you think about them. <sighs> Moving on! This next entry is actually one that I've been thinking about making a totally separate video on, and it's the Dyatlov Pass incident. But uh, in short, this happened in Russia, February 1959. Nine experienced hikers went to the Ural Mountains for a bit of a hike. That's what hikers do, and they went ahead and they did that. Their leader was uh, Igor Dyatlov, and the incident has been named after him. Yeah, it would have been weird otherwise, I guess, if that was his name and this thing happened at that place. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Little ramble, let's move on. These hikers were out there, out and about in the very cold Russian winter. One night they put up camp at Oroten Mountain and uh, just yep, yep, hit the hay for the night for another day of adventuring. But they went to sleep totally unaware of what would happen next and we're still here unaware as well as to what actually happened that night. What we know is that the tent had been cut from the inside. All of the hikers were found cancelled from their life's subscription in different places away from their tent, in various states of undress or wearing each other's clothing which could point to a very sudden and panicked and chaotic escape from whatever happened. Some suggest an avalanche, but the tent was found with just a little bit of snow over it that did not suggest that. It, it was like a natural piling of snow from the skies. Either way, some of them were found almost undre as completely undressed. They were like only in their underwear and some, like I said, was were wearing other people's clothing and everything that they would have needed to survive was still in the tent. It was confirmed that some of them have died of hypothermia, while some of them had traumatic injuries to their skulls, to their chests. One was missing her tongue, and one was missing eyes and eyebrows. 
and we still don't know what caused it. Theories are many. Locals came forward and said that they had seen glowing orbs and lights in the skies, so that suggested aliens once again. Radiation had been found on some of their bodies, so that suggested that it had been some Russian military... R Russian military thing that went wrong? And therefore, some kind of cover-up would have ensued. And some suggest that they were attacked by a yeti. The jury is still out. Let me know your conspiracies, theories, down below. And the last entry to this part of the series is a short and sweet one. The identity of Jack the Ripper. Even though his infamous cancellation of People's Live subscription spree in 1888, we still have no idea who the heck this man or woman was. There's plenty of suspects ranging from respected doctors, to royals, to Polish immigrants, female murderers. There's just too many to bring up. Might have to do a video on that too in the future. Just going through all of the suspects. What is true is that it's highly unlikely that we'll ever truly know who the Whitechapel demon actually was. A mystery for the ages. And that wraps up this part. The next one will be very very soon. So hit the bell so you won't miss it. More mysteries and oddities coming your way. Thank you so much for watching this video and please leave a little comment down below what you thought. Boost that algorithm, leave a little like and a, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. This all fucked up. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't hurt, I promise. And hit the bell so you don't miss the next part because this will be many parts. It's a long, long iceberg. Mm, lots of fun ahead. Yay! And a giant thanks as always to my heroes, my lovely patrons. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. After this, I'm gonna record a little historical Victorian true crime case for you only on Patreon and it'll be up soon. I promise. Yay! Either way, stay hydrated, mm? stay amazing, but most of all, stay morbid. See you soon. Bye-bye.